from the Fox 2 Studios. The new starts now. To split the bill or not to split the bill, we will tell you how you can avoid any awkwardness when it comes to, you know, the time to pay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know I was split. Like, you have to make that announcement up front. Etiquette. We're socializing. We'll see. Yeah, we shall see. Also, Marielle, a growing tech scene in Detroit that's welcoming more of the community to join. How one husband and wife team are helping to build a network for people of color in tech. Also, we're getting a taste of Chicago street food in the Fox 2 kitchen. Portello's is here to cook up some Chicago-style hot dogs in honor of National Hot Dog Week. I'm a pop star, not a doctor. Hey, shorty with the long text, I don't talk to. Shorty with the long legs, she don't walk to. Yeah, last year. Yeah, like he was in town like recently. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was. Did you make it out? I did not make it out. No? I know a few folks who did. I have seen him in concert before, mm -hmm. talking about Drake. Yeah. He's very, very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, uh, the stage. Yes, and great stage presence, yes. great. I, I don't mean to sound so surprised, but you know, with the rappers sometimes, you're just mm -hmm. wondering, what am I really going to get as a show? But he put on a show. Yeah, and with Drake, as we all know, there's a song for every vibe. Oh, yes. It every tune, it. every mood, you got something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. You're watching The Noon. I'm Maria Lou. We have a special guest today. I'm making my, a cameo appearance, I think. Hello, hello. Oh, welcome. Thank you for having me, First time on The Noon? I think so. Welcome. Hello. Happy to have you here, sir. Good vibes. Good vibes. I'm Josh Land. All right. We'll start right here. Mm. Uh-huh. The Golden Arches. Okay. What's the name of the restaurant? McDonald's. Okay. All that's, right. that's what I would say. That's yes. what I thought. That's what former Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms would say as mm -hmm. well. But it might just be the three of us, Josh. Oh. Yeah. The former mayor revealing this text message where her daughter is saying it's pronounced McDonald's. And the daughter is not alone. So. <laughs> Oh, she's not wrong? She's not alone. Oh, she's not alone. A okay, lot okay. of people also say McDonald's. Keisha <sighs> Lads Bottoms posting this message we saw on her Instagram, and it really did just get us think, how do you say it? Ma it's not McDonald's? Can you take someone seriously who says McDonald's? I cannot. Right? Have you ever heard of the saying, depending on what side of the street you grew up on? Sure, 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 sure. So if you say... McDonald's uh -huh. versus McDonald's. Uh -huh. uh, they probably grew up on the other side of the street. <laughs> oh, no. Respectfully. <laughs> Respectfully. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. And Mario, we were talking about this in the morning meeting, yeah. too. It also takes me down the line of this is a word that makes me cringe when I hear people say it. Yeah. Conversate. Not a word. Not a word. Not a word. Not a word at all. Not a word at all. Mm -hmm. Never has been, never will be. Correct. Therefore, I intentionally say, every day on the air as much yes. as I can. Yes. Conversing. Yes. That's what the Te word is. You have to teach the people. You have to teach the people. Like I know Biggie Small says it in his okay. songs, but. That doesn't make it right. No. You just enjoy the vibe, but you don't say it in regular proper English. Okay. Yeah. So you, you say McDonald's mm -hmm. and convert, like that's. Conversing, and having a conversation. That's what we want. Yes. Okay, and you equate people who say conversate to people who say McDonald's. Kind of. Yeah. I do. It, it took me down that, that mm -hmm. memory. That mm -hmm. memory. Yeah. Um, I'd like to uh, see that and no. raise you this. Go for it. Recently was having conversations with a person. Mm -hmm. Conversing. Conversing with a person. <laughs> I was getting ready to say that. And um, it was revealed to me that they've never had a filet of fish sandwich. From McDonald's? Correct. Or maybe they went to McDonald's. Right. You're probably missing an item or two at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I don't know. Have it there. We haven't been to I don't McDonald's. Know. I, I don't know. know what side okay. of the street this person grew up on. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Can you trust someone outside of a fish allergy? Fair. So don't hashtag the noon me to death with I'm allergic to fish. I've never had it. Okay. Obviously, I don't want you to die for the sandwich. But no. if you have no allergies. Mm -hmm. Can you really trust someone who's never had a filet of fish? No, because if you've gone to McDonald's so uh -huh. versus maybe McDonald's, mm. you've had every food item on the menu. You, ha you must Big Mac, have tried quarter pounder, yes. fish filet. Yes. I mean, it's the fries, okay if it's fresh not out of the your grease. Favorite. It's, it's fine if it's not your favorite. Of not. But yeah. to have never 
tried a filet of fish that's like saying you never had kool-aid it's very very strange to yeah. me very strange to me again what side of the street did you grow up on <laughs> i don't know we're, ask, we're asking fair questions i believe what it now yeah. uh, this did surprise me what, did? what do you think is the top selling sandwich item and not talking breakfast here mm -hmm. uh so like lunch dinner item at mcdonald's what do you think it is I would guess Quarter Pounder or Big Mac. You would be correct. Yeah. Filet of fish coming in at number two, though. And actually, it's the double Quarter Pounder. Oh. Which to me is like. That's you, a lot. America. Uh, a double quarter pounder uh, double is quarter the pounder? number one? That's a lot of meat. Yeah. You're just, you're just eating that, that all the time? A double all, all, all quarter the time. A Ooh. double quarter pounder? That's it for it to be the number one. The number one selling sandwich is a double quarter pounder at McDonald's. Filet of fish is number one for me. Oh, every time. Every time. And don't mess mm. around with a two for five. No, no. Don't you dare mess around. Now. With fries, too. Gotta have the fries. Fresh off the grease. Okay, now do you do a Coke or a Sprite, though? Sprite. Really? Yeah. I can go either way. I, I feel like they're both. Something's different at McDonald's. Or that McDonald's I go high Coke is orange. so good. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. All acceptable choices. Mm -hmm. Mind for McDonald's to add a little um, strawberry pop. Ooh. I, I feel like that's a duh, and they don't have that, and they should. Maybe a little. I know they have too. those fancy. Well, we can't go getting all crazy. I now. mean, come on. If you can only add one. Trip, yeah. I feel like I feel like the strawberry would be, and that would be the top choice. Yeah. I don't know why they don't have that outside of those crazy machines that have a million flavors of everything, mm -hmm. but. Okay, so can you Team trust options. someone who's never had a filet of fish? That's hashtag uh, the name, let me know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't okay. know if this was. Okay. Now, two more serious yes. stories. Yeah. Very serious. Um, the police and the public raising questions after an Alabama woman who went missing last week returns home safely. Yeah. Police say Carly Russell showed up at her home Saturday night. She disappeared on Thursday after calling police about a toddler walking on the side of the highway. She stopped to check on the child and called a family member. That's when they say they lost contact with her. The search for Russell made national headlines and blew up on social media. It's still unclear what caused her disappearance or how she returned home. Police say they never found the toddler. She reported seeing on the highway and there were no other reports about it. About the missing child. Yeah, and that's where you, we're not, nope. first and foremost, we are happy that she is safe. Yes. Of course, clearly. Yes. Clearly. Yes. Outside of that. <laughs> okay, okay, after that, after okay, that, yes, after that. Yes. As an aside, as yes. an aside. Okay. Where is the child? Where is he? <laughs> he or she? I, we, we don't know. That, that's, the, that's what instantly came to mind. Yeah. Where is the kid? Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so there are some uh, questions yes. about what exactly happened. Uh -huh. And now the family has said, we need time, mm -hmm. give Carly space, Fair. and eventually maybe we'll know. I did post this to some of my social media friends, and I do think that the feeling is people do want to know what happened. Absolutely. I think there was absolutely an overwhelming feeling of you have to allow um, Carly to heal mm -hmm. and give her the time that she needs, but people would like just to know what happened because if she was kidnapped, mm -hmm. which is what it seems as though is the case right now, I mean, that is, first of all, we know human trafficking is not talked about enough. Not enough at and all. And a problem across the country. Very Michigan, true. one of the top states for sure because of the international border. Mm -hmm. So absolutely something that we all have to be aware of. And I don't think it's unimaginable that a toddler or a child would be oh. used as, as bait. Mm -hmm. And the reason it would be bait is because there were no other calls about the child either yeah. on the highway that we're aware of or any like missing kid reports. Mm -hmm. So there's there's more to the story. We, it would do the, the public some justice to mm -hmm. know fully what happened. Yeah. It's just one of those, it's, it's too bizarre to just let go. Yeah, just want uh, a little more info. Yeah, and, and, and it's also good, as we talked about earlier this morning, to see how the community came out. Yes. To make sure to 
find some kind of closure, some kind of resolution to this whole situation and to know that she is safe and sound physically and find out what happens. Yeah, next there's a lot to be proud of there because it um, should be said that when young people of color mm -hmm. or people of color in general, I yep. should say, go missing, they don't always get the same attention. Not the same level of exposure. Exactly. Coverage. So this was one that was certainly a grassroots social media. Mm -hmm. This is happening. This has been on the news. Nobody knows about it. It's not out there. Please help us. And I saw that story everywhere on Instagram and TikTok. It's fascinating. And it's absolutely a testament to the fact that the people can start a movement and get information out there. Amen. All right. All right. What do you think? Hashtag the noon. We want to hear from you. We're we'll reading your comments. Coming up, McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, McDonald's, McDonald's, mm -hmm. depending on what side of the street. <laughs> and again, maybe they don't have filet of fish at McDonald's. I, I guess they don't. Uh, we shall see. All right, uh, as Mario just alluded to, still much more ahead on new, on the noon. We'll tell you about a new exhibit highlighting the career of rap icon Jay-Z. Plus, after more than 50 years, the civil rights leader, Reverend Jesse Jackson, stepping down from the Rainbow Push Coalition. We have more on his retirement and what's next for the organization. That's coming up. Mr. Kefra. Guys, we are still tracking what's going to be, I think, a little bit of smoke out there through the next several hours. How long is that smoke going to last? When will it leave? And when do the storms come back? When on Thursday? First half, second half of the day. Your forecast is coming up.
All right, welcome back. Uh, big news over the weekend, Marielle. Uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson stepping down from his leadership role at the Rainbow Push Coalition. The civil rights icon formally making the announcement at a convention in Chicago over the weekend. Fox's C.B. Cotton has the details. A big change for one of the nation's civil rights organizations and its leaders. The Reverend Jesse Jackson is stepping down as president of the Rainbow Push Coalition, making the announcement during a farewell speech at the group's annual convention in Chicago. The group that he founded more than 50 years ago, paying tribute to the civil rights leader with songs, speeches, and a video montage of his presidential bids. Vice President Kamala Harris, the keynote speaker at the convention, honoring Jackson and his commitment to service. Someone who deeply believes in the promise of our country, a fighter for freedom and human rights for all people. A household name for decades, Jackson is viewed as a protege of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. He gave us um, morality. He, he taught us how to treat one another. Jackson worked on voting rights, social justice, and equality in education, and twice ran for president in the 1980s. And while he lost, his political activism paved the way for others. Barack Obama would not be president had there not been a Jesse Jackson. The 81-year-old has had several health issues in recent years and announced in 2017 that he had Parkinson's disease. He addressed his decision to step aside this weekend. I'm going to uh, uh, make a transition pretty soon. I've been doing this uh, for 60 four years. The Reverend Dr. Frederick Haynes III of Dallas, Texas, is taking over as his successor. In New York, C.B. Cotton, Fox News. All right, very good. Bringing in Dever Derek Kever now for a check of the forecast. Listen, these spotty showers have been more than spotty. Mm. Yeah, they have been. Okay, quite strong at times. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little consistency, please. Uh huh. I think we're going to get it for like three days. Okay. It's I not think like we're going to drought. I mean, yeah. We can we're do good. without the rain. Yeah, I know it. Uh, <laughs> Here, here, we are going to get a break from the rain, which is good. And we're going to see those storms return as we head into Thursday. So we're not done with them for the season. We're not even done with them for the week. But we are done with them, I think, for the day and uh, probably for uh, about three days here. With those storms returning Thursday, that gives us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of mostly dry. Some smoke and some of that haze. You know, we dealt with it yesterday. We're going to deal with it through today. I think by 8 o'clock it's going to get better tonight. That's going to be our Monday talker. And then the uh, possibility of, of maybe some spots in Michigan. I don't think it's going to be us but there's a chance that some spots in northern Michigan, if you're up north, north of Traverse City, Bay City, in the UP, you've got a small opportunity to see some of those tonight. We have a small G1 geomagnetic storm out there, which could maybe possibly, depending on the light pollution, allow northern Michigan to see it. We'll check uh, social media all night long and see what happens. Air quality, okay, so we gotta deal with that today. The smoke from uh, Alberta, not from Quebec. Now those are way, totally different sides of Canada. The Alberta wildfires are way up up there in the like north of the Pacific Northwest so you're talking real Western Canada and that is where the smoke is coming from and we are dealing with it now today there's a bit of a haze out there to the atmosphere this is Grand Rapids now yesterday Grand Rapids was a bit smoky and hazy today they've got those clouds out there it's a nicer looking day as their air quality has gotten a little bit better but uh, they're still under the air quality alert as well feels like temperatures as we move through the afternoon it's going to be about 81 82 degrees I went 82 today with those smoky skies should be quiet through Wednesday with the showers and storms returning as we head into Thursday. Could be another active weather day. Might see some strong storms, might see some severe storms by Thursday. So we're kind of circling that one. And the lingering showers into Friday as well. Josh, over to you. Rain, rain, go away, DK. Thank you, my man. All right, coming up, a new effort in the city of Detroit that's creating positive change using tech. I was bringing communities together and building a brighter future.
Well, welcome back. The tech scene in Detroit, that includes the black community, but it's a topic not often discussed. Mario, that's why a local husband and wife are building a new outlet for networking and is growing pretty fast. Why do you feel Black Tech Saturdays are needed here in Metro Detroit? Um, honestly, because there's just like misnomer that tech isn't black, that black people aren't in tech. Johnny Turnage is alluding to a misunderstanding that can build a lack of confidence. We don't see ourselves as the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world creating things or the Steve Jobs because that's not always highlighted. And when we have those wins, they're very minimized. Detroit maintains a culture of needing to see and touch, and that also applies to the tech industry. Sometimes for us, those of us trying to jump into it, it's not always the most comfortable to raise your hand in a crowd of room of people where you're one of you and say, I don't understand that. I think I can do this, but I don't know that piece. And kind of creating that safe space where we can answer, like ask those questions is important, but I just don't think we see it enough. Therefore, this husband and wife duo have created Black Tech Saturdays. It began in March only drawing a handful of people to now north of 100, coming together every weekend inside of the new lab at Michigan Central Station. And the reason why Johnny and I chose here is because this is the center of innovation and tech in the city of Detroit. So we were able to come here and really just be joined and kind of jump in a pool of a different community where we're all building and growing different things in tech. This conversation, along with the efforts, is also connected to the topic of the digital divide. We are not exposed to the opportunities as early as everyone else in terms of schooling, in terms of career opportunity. So we don't realize that the skills that we have can be very applicable and are actually needed in tech. Part of the approach is storytelling. Everyone's sharing their own journey with a different theme each month. In July is about how do you listen for what you need. As an entrepreneur, both listening to your customers, as someone looking for a job, how are you listening in those conversations? This appears to be a much needed outlet with Johnny Turnage adding a little bit of humor behind the website blacktechsaturdays.com, but also laying out the real point for all of this. Blacktechsaturdays.com, which is super funny that it was available. I have to say, no one at Black Tech Saturdays on anything. But blacktechsaturdays.com, you can check out the other events. And and once again, the website is blacktechsaturdays.com. They operate every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the new lab over at uh, Michigan Central Station. Growing so support and uh, interesting enough, Mario, about a month ago, I was at the gym just working out with some guys. We're in the locker room just chatting about whatever. And there was a young man, maybe late 20s, and he just randomly asked me, is there somewhere I can go and network in the tech industry here in Detroit? Mm. And at the time, I had no clue. I said, maybe LinkedIn? Yeah. But it just, it just, just draws to the point of there is that need for this particular network. Yeah. And it's such a growing field. It's a strong field. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is important to have, I would even say, a safe space. If there doesn't feel like there's a large black presence mm -hmm. in tech, even though it's not necessarily true in terms of, you know, like nationally. And right. it's just, it's, it's about who's highlighted, right? And what projects are greenlit. Yep. Um, so if there's a safe space where you're able to just learn more and grow and kind of test things mm -hmm. out, I could see why there'd be a huge draw to that. Super proud of that couple. Absolutely. Kudos to them, and uh, it, it appears Detroit is on the uh, on the path to becoming yes. one of the next tech hubs here in the country. So also, it should probably be pointed out. Yeah, um, you could have just said somebody somebody asked you where's a good place. Is there a good? But I noticed that you said I was at the gym. That's where it happened. That's working where it happened. Y'all heard that, right? Like, I was at the gym. If I was at the restaurant, working if I was, out, I, it, it was a grueling workout. Never skip a day, leg day. A brother's only sharing his candy <laughs> where it happened. If it was at a restaurant, if it was at a bus stop, uh, that's what I would have said. That's what I would have said. <laughs> it was truly at the gym, Mario. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and the, the younger guy, he was more buff than me. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't have anything on that fella. Mm -hmm. so, it, just, I'm just oh saying, I'm paying attention to the details. Oh, my. Here I we go. the details. That's all. The details. <sighs> all right. Fair enough. I ran into a gentleman, and he didn't know where to go for the tech industry in Detroit. Now you know. There Detroit we is, go. Detroit is the next tech hub. <laughs> I love that. That is a great story. <laughs> I was doing research, man. <laughs>
doing research. Uh, okay, this story coming up. You sticking around for this one? Uh -huh. The House and Senate working to get the government to share more information about UFOs. Could we finally get some answers? That's coming up. at the Brooklyn Library, the Book of Hove. I like it. Oh, this is awesome. It chronicles Jay-Z's career and his impact on the music industry as a whole. The exhibit features awards, never before seen photos, clothing, original recording masters, and more. The Book of Hove is now open to the public. It was so cool. On the outside of the uh, library, they put lyrics uh -huh. oh. to his songs. I mean, just, I thought it was really, really awesome to see someone honored in this way. Mm -hmm. And we know, I think it should be information that maybe more people have on how prolific Jay-Z is, you know? Very fair. You know what I mean? It's just unbelievable what he puts together mm -hmm. in a song and what he's teaching. And he's oh, always been a so ghostwriter for other artists, too. Yes. Yeah. Um, I also like this story, Mario, because it, it's good to acknowledge this being a part of history. Where this being a part of history. Mm -hmm. Where 
a rap icon may not be recognized in the same fashion as a as an activist or right. a, an athlete. Exactly. Like this is still a significant part of history and everything Jay-Z has done in the rap industry. Right. Becoming a mogul. Yeah. Billionaire. Two billion. Psh. I there mean, you go. come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Give Beyonce's the man his not even worth a billion yet. No. It's amazing what he's been able to do. Uh, incredible. Ooh, incredible. I like we've done this before. Um, can I get your top five list? Oh, rappers? Okay, that's easy. Um Biggie. Okay. Pac. Biggie over Pac? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm sorry. Just it's, um, okay. Just asking. Sorry. I, I love Pac. Okay. We all love Pac. Yeah. But Biggie. Okay. Pac. Mm -hmm. Eminem. Mm -hmm. Nas. Nice, nice, nice. Most deaf. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, well-rounded list. Variety. We don't want, uh, like, Lil Wayne up there, or, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, lyrical genius. Well, that, that's what I based it on. That's what I based my top five of on. Of course, of course. Lyrics, nothing but lyrics. Um, so, Lil I mean, Wayne. just that real G's move in silence like lasagna. Yeah. I mean, I just. We can throw Lil Wayne in the top ten, possibly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And also, with the top five list, I, I don't know how fair it is, how much longer... But, I mean, Pac and Big, of course, but it's like, you really only get to pick three. Because you have, you, yeah. you know, they've got to be on your list every catalog. time. Oh, Big, stronger lyrics. Yeah. Pac, greater catalog. Big, stronger lyrics? Yes. Ooh, okay. I don't know. I, I, mean, I think yes. I'm going Pac. Pac is number <laughs> Lyrically? Wait, is that, can we just get a ding or a, because I'm saying Pac is number one. The Notorious B.I.G. I feel like that was still for me, though. Oh, yeah. Was that for me? Pac is number one. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, that's just... Lyrically? And this is not... This is nobody I paid to do this. This mm -hmm. is... Uh, On the spot. Live at 12.33 in the and afternoon. And it represents, you know, uh -huh. the, opinion of, the opinion of millions. Yes. So... Guess I'm right. Okay. Thanks for sticking with us on the news. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Lou, Josh Landon. What's up, everybody? All right, what's next? All right, uh, speaking of rap, speaking of music, Mario, uh, it turns out Drake won't have to pay up that $230,000 in fines for allegedly playing past curfew at his show at LCA last weekend. The rapper telling fans he would have to pay up 10 grand a minute for playing 23 minutes past the 11 p.m. curfew. But according to the Detroit Free Press, there is no curfew at LCA. The city of Detroit does have a noise curfew for outdoor events, but that doesn't appear to be the case regarding indoor shows. All right, you're talking about this on the 9 o'clock, I believe, earlier, right? Yes. Okay, give yes. me your intake again. Well, I just think that um, they didn't have a reason for why they weren't going to charge him. Okay. And so, fine. Mm -hmm. On one hand, if the money goes to the city and they mm. need it and, you know, Detroit does need it, then it's like... Pay up, Drake. But if you want big acts to come, you can't be charging them for going over. With that being said, also big acts. Yeah. Big performers. Yeah. Perform on time. Ooh. I heard Drake had a great show. Yeah. But he was late. What? Oh. Like more than an hour late. Oh. Yeah, he didn't come out till like 9.15 that Saturday night and maybe, no, not like 9.30 that Saturday night and 9.15 that Sunday night. So, so maybe that's why he, he performed late, though. Because he was late. Yeah, because he was late. Yeah. I mean, but can't you see an artist saying, well, I want to make sure you get the best show you can, and then the crowd goes wild. <laughs> and if you paid to go to that show, you want him to perform. I mean, that's, if that's an extra hour... As much of a Drake fan that I am, yeah. he also posted on Instagram of gambling at, after 8 o'clock that Saturday night. Was, ooh, was he at the Motor City Casino? I think so. He was I, somewhere. He posted somewhere. He posted on his IG. I uh -huh. had, um, I was on an outdoor jog yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Working out. I was on the outside. I jaw. just said that because uh, Dina walked in. Oh, but, DC. Yeah, she needed to know that. But I was on an outdoor <laughs> jog yesterday, and on the way back from the jog, a bunch of people from the neighborhood were like, "Come on over." So uh -huh. I ended up stopping and having some margaritas and quesadilla, yeah, yeah. which is not good for the workout. But 
in that group was one of the managers over at Motor City. Mm. He did say Drake and his crew were there. I didn't put together. It was before the show. I just assumed after. He said they were there having a grand old time. Mm. Oh, you're right, Josh. He was hanging out before he was. Well, then that set to you perform. can't be late to your show because you're exactly. at Motor City. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, so we're going past our great, curfew time, Drake. quote unquote. But yeah. you were more than an hour late. Yeah. Again, great show. Yeah. Both nights. Yeah. I've heard. But there you go. You don't. Two wanna... mile jog, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the Good House job. Oversight Committee planning to hold a hearing on UFOs. Could we finally get the information we've been craving? The mm. committee says that the hearing is in response to several recent unconfirmed claims involving UFOs, including the recovery of beings that are not human. This comes as Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Mike Rounds introduced an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act, and it would create a review board charged with declassifying UFO-related records. Reports say the Oversight Committee's hearing could happen at the end of the this month. <clears throat> we have not had your um, expertise on aliens yet. How do you feel? We're not alone. Period. Period. I mean, I, I feel as asinine, as naive to yeah. think we are. Right. We are not. Yeah, of course. Um, now, the question is, should we know more about what else is out there potentially? I think that's a bigger debate. I'm surprised to hear this opinion and it's the opinion of, of many mm -hmm. that maybe if there is information about aliens that yeah. people can't handle it and that we basically shouldn't be told because look how we act. Right, basically. right, right. I was surprised that that was a con I mean I would think everybody wants to know yes there are aliens or no there are not and mm -hmm. just tell us the truth how wh why do you think people can't handle it panic right a lot of people can't handle pressure sure can't handle a little chaos but I mean you find out I mean it's one thing okay but do you yeah. want to find out at the point of invasion or you want to know ahead of time Independence Day style you know what I mean yeah because they're not, we're not smarter than them. I can tell you that right nah, now. No, they're more advanced. Yes. We're probably getting our technology from them. No. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. How much do I want to know? Sometimes ignorance is bliss. Y yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it is. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Would you be scared? Nah. No? Nah. I mean, they're bigger than us, Josh. You think they're just little short, little tiny guys? Like no, guys no, no, no. They're, the much, they're much bigger. Okay, you're not scared? Would you fight an alien? Win, lose, or draw? <laughs> <laughs> it won't I be can, easy. You, <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. We also, in the newsroom, this huh? kind of went into a zombie apocalypse place. Okay. How do you feel your odds would be in a zombie apocalypse? This is a very important oh, question, I, by I, the way. I heard that discussion, and one name came to mind the moment you guys started conversing about that. <laughs> yes. John Connor. The Terminator oh. movie, like the, the mm -hmm. dude who fought back, who yeah. wasn't taking no for an answer, like, right. no, I'm not folding for you. you. You think that's how you'd be? I wouldn't have a choice. Win, lose, or draw, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. I mean, but do you feel like, you? can you start a fire in the woods? Like, can you survive? Oh yeah, you, you, you find a way. You, yeah? Yeah, you become resourceful. See, I don't know. I, oh. I would link up with someone who was good at surviving. Oh, that's fair enough. And I can fight. Yeah. But also with the zombies, I mean, one, you know, if they bite your hand, I think, oh, yeah. well, you, then you are, you're, so I don't know, I don't know how great I'd be. Yeah, one person lays out the booby traps and yeah. lays out the game plan, the other person executes it. Play your position. Yeah, yeah. so I, yeah, I just have to find a good, but I would play the heck out of that position, yeah. though, whatever it was. You gotta find, find right. the right teammates and Perfect. fight uh, the yes. big old aliens. Crew. Yeah. A good crew. A good crew. All right. Oh, speaking of having a good crew. Yes. You also need a good crew when you go out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So when, when going out to eat with friends, how do you feel about splitting the bill? Let's take a look. It's a real quick no. That's a hard pass. You're absolutely not. Very uninterested in that option. All right, Mario, here's what etiquette experts say you should do to avoid any awkwardness or conflict when it comes to paying. Voice any concerns about splitting the bill before you order or tell the group you plan to pay separately. Number two, if you plan on splitting the check but things are uneven, you can discreetly tell your server you want your own bill. Number three, Ooh. yeah. 
Number three, Mariella, agree to splitting the tip and tax instead of the whole thing. Tip Ladies and first, tax. go for it. <sighs> mm -hmm. I do think these split the bill people have gotten out of hand. I do. I think you guys are out of control. Oh, don't. And you need oh, to be yeah, reined yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I do. Um, the folks who and and it, and I think it should be understood before you go, when you're with friends. Mm -hmm. The problem comes when you have that one person who's like, you guys just want to get a bottle? Or you guys just want to... And then next thing you know, you're having some... And then the bill comes, and... It, 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 and it's so uncomfortable to say, I didn't want to pay for that. Let me throw, throw something out there. Okay. It's all about having a good vibe. Being around friends where it's like, okay. It's about having the money. It's about having, of course it's about having the money, of course. Well, if you don't have the money, then you stay home. <laughs> we okay. start there. Okay. Like, if, if you're going to Venmo me $30, just, just I me. Mean, why are we even going out? Why, why, why even do it? Why are you here? Okay, so my friend Elijah and I, like, we go out all the time, and we hey, just Elijah. have. Hey, Elijah. Go, good afternoon, brother. So we have a vibe of when we go out, it just whatever flows. I take out my car. No. But it all it all plays itself out. It all evens out. Whatever flows. Tell me more. What, how does that look? I mean, I'm at the how bar. We're, we're at the bar, whatever, whatever. We're grabbing food. However, it just flows. Like, if I'm there, I'll get it. If he's there, he'll get it. He'll get the next one. I'll get the next one. We're not, we're not counting pennies on who's paying for what, who's splitting what. Yes. Because we're boys. We're friends. We're yeah. going out. We're having a good time. But sometimes things change. And what uh -huh. if it's a little tight this month? You know what I mean? Then you, you stay home. You, that's where you keep it real. Like, hey, look, Mario. Hey, so look. if you can't go and go all out and buy shots for the whole bar, because I've heard how you do. Oh, my goodness. I'm not that. Everybody I'm not that land. generous. I heard uh, how you do it. I'm not that generous. Money bag uh, landing. Uh, <laughs> so if you can't do that, then you're not going? If I can't go out and be comfortable. Yeah, but comfortable is you having a couple of drinks and eating. So, yeah. so you're not comfortable saying, hey, Elijah, this time is it okay if we just, if I get mine and you get yours? Yeah, if I have to do that, then yeah. I mean, my, my, my other friend, Poshko, too, like, well, he never lets anybody pay. He's just... Ooh, we need to be hanging out with Poshko that, 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 That's him. He, like, you try to take out your credit card. He's like, no, yeah, no, he, no. He's like... See, and that's fine. All right. <laughs> what do you guys think? How do you handle it ahead of time? Do you handle it ahead of time or just complain about it in the car later like most of us? Mm. Hashtag the noon and let us know. Stay at home. <laughs> All right, Marielle, uh, we're cooking up some Chicago-style hot dogs with Portillo's to celebrate National Hot Dog Day. They join us in the Fox 2 Kitchen next.
Welcome back. We're celebrating National Hot Dog Week, Chicago style. Jim Rogers and Laureen, Laureen Shaner from Portillo's is here to show us how to make some Chicago style dogs and Italian beef sandwiches. Welcome to you both. Okay, what do we have in front of us here? Well, oh. today we've got our uh, Italian beef mm -hmm. and our Chicago style hot dog with some of our fries and our chocolate cake shake. Okay, tell me more about this uh, chocolate cake shake. I know we're talking about hot dogs, but I cannot ignore that shake. It's hard to ignore. Uh, yeah. Our chocolate cake shake is one of our chocolate shakes, and we take a piece of our uh, famous chocolate cake, and Beautiful. we blend all that in together, and it makes a pretty uh, pretty amazing dessert. It's oh. amazing. Mm. Okay, Laureen, uh, tell me more about the Chicago-style hot dog. We're used to Detroit-style, but we're going to switch it up for a bit and enjoy Chicago-style. What do we have? All right, well, okay. Chicago-style hot dog uh -huh. comes, uh, we, uh, they say in Chicago, drag it through the garden uh -huh. because we get all this, all of this wonderful toppings on it. We've got mustard, uh -huh. has relish, onions, tomatoes, celery salt, pickles, and sport peppers. Ooh, now question for both of you. Is it okay to put ketchup on a, ooh. Oh. We, we're, we're getting silent uh, very quickly. I'm gonna go with a don't ask, don't tell uh, <laughs> okay. situation on right. that with you, Josh. Uh-huh. Yes. All right, all right, uh, fair enough. Um, what do we have here? Uh, this is our Italian beef. This mm -hmm. is sliced uh, roast beef with uh, we've uh, on a French bread. Mm -hmm. We freshly bake our French bread every day, and we you can top it with our hot jardinier, which is a uh, peppers uh, pepper and vegetable mix, or our sweet peppers. Beautiful. C could one of you do me a favor, make me a Chicago style hot dog if you I'd don't be mind? Happy to do yeah, that I like for to see you, how okay? this looks. All right. So All we right. get our poppy seed buns on. that are made for us mm -hmm. in Chicago. Okay. All right, and we put a little mustard on here. No ketchup. No ketchup. No ketchup. <laughs> no ketchup. Okay. All right. I can hear it in your tone. <laughs> no ketchup. We All got right. relish. Uh huh. Onions. Uh huh. Okay. Some tomatoes. Tomato. Oh. Yes, sir. That's what it is. You you, you fill it up like a darn yeah, sandwich. Right there. Put a couple shakes of our uh, celery salt down there, which okay. is an amazing condiment to have. Uh huh. And some of these sport peppers, which I think are a little hotter than uh, pepperoncinis, but not too, not quite as hot as a habanero. Yeah. And that is a Chicago-style hot dog right oh, there. I wanted you to make it for effect, but I have to try this chocolate mm -hmm. cake shake. I think you're gonna love it. Mm. What do you think? I think we're okay. <laughs> I think we're okay. All right. Um, what is it about your chocolate cake? Well, we uh, fresh bake all of our cakes, all mm -hmm. of our desserts, in fact, every day in the store. Yeah. Uh, they're baked, they're frosted, everything's right there. Uh, it's really moist, rich oh. chocolate cake. And how many pounds of frosting? Two pounds Two of pounds. frosting. I was going to ask, like, it doesn't look to be uh, short of any frosting. No. no. Not at all. It's no. amazing. Mm-hmm. It looks amazing. All yes. right. Okay, where are you guys located? Uh, Sterling Heights, mm -hmm. uh, right by, well, soon to be uh, Lakeside Mall. Okay. We're uh, right across the street there. All right. Beautiful. Yes. All right. Well, Jim, thank you. Thank you. Well, Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. And again, the address right there on your screen a moment ago, and they are again a lake located in Sterling Heights near Lakeside Mall. Yeah. Go check out Portillo's and have a Chicago style hot dog to uh, celebrate National Hot Dog Week. Yes, All right, we'll thank be right back. Y'all, thank you. Thank you.
All right, welcome back. I would not be a decent human being, Mario, <laughs> if I did not wish my mother, Leela, a happy birthday. She yes. turned 72 today. All right. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. And what does she do? She goes to work. Really? Mom is at work. At 72? At 72. She got wow. up this morning. She, she gets up every morning at 4 o'clock. She's working on her birthday? She's working on her birthday. Oh, my goodness. We'll get her out this weekend. Yes. I said, hey, let's do something today. She's like, no, 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 no. You're working. I'm working. We'll, we'll do something this weekend. So there you go. You're Happy paying, birthday. right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on now. Hey, if you don't have any money, stay at home. <laughs> stay at home. And that's what they say. Nancy says, I'm with Josh. If you don't have the money, stay home. Yes. Why? Why, why bother? Why bother? Why bother? Yes. Let's see. What you got? Uh, hi, Mario. Uh, pop definitely number one influential. Biggie, better lyrics, though. Happy birthday to your mom, Josh. Thank you. Thank Love you. that. All right. Somebody else echoes that as well. Biggie versus Pac. I'm going Biggie. Pac has a stronger overall catalog. Mm. Bar for bar, though, Biggie's a better rapper. And that's the point it I was trying like to that's make. that's what people are saying. Yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. uh, Marielle really flexing about this workout today. <laughs> I thought she'd talk more about this tan from her vacation, but I digress. Oh, where did I, you go? <laughs> I was in Hawaii for a little while. Oh, my oh, gosh. Beautiful. We, they're saying rap, but we've got to talk about this double filet of fish. People uh -huh. talking about that. Veronica says she's never had a a filet of fish um, that she's a trustworthy person and uh, there were many people Josh who uh -huh. were saying McDonald's so maybe when you're five years old oh Josh okay sorry sorry <laughs> just okay. just we'll say right all right
amazing 70-30 split on the McDonald's. That's a lot of people out here saying McDonald's. How Just, about that? Yeah, wanted you to know that. All right, good to know. Uh, thank you for tuning in. You've been watching the noon. We'll be right back here at 5 o'clock. All right, Sheffy Shep Sherry Shepard <laughs> is up next. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday.